Okay, well, here we are on day four since we went to Crantock. We went to Crantock what, Wednesday? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it's day three since we went to Crantock. Starting to blend a bit. But yesterday we did all that driving up to Littlehampton and then over to Cardigan. Um, didn't get a van. And now we're going camping. So we're now off. Porf Leven, which is down on the Lizard Peninsula, and uh, just a couple of days chilling out with some friends, possibly go for a walk or two, and just um, really just relax. Next week, we were meant to be going to see a van on Wednesday, they've contacted us today and asked if we can make it Thursday because they're coming back from the concert. So, we'll see what happens with that one. Anyway, stay along and carry on with us. Down with the front of my friends who are down the far side of the campsite, so we've just whipped everything up. So we're now down in the lower field. We're in a campsite called Out of the Blue in Port Flevin. This is the lower field. There's an electric hookup down here. It's washing facilities over there, as you can see. Pretty quiet. There's a car park just in behind. I'd imagine you get a little bit of noise from the club a little later as we come round. You can see the tent pitches in there. I think that's just in there is just for tent pitches. And as we come round, this is the washing facilities and bins. It's all quite basic, but it's. It is nice in this poor Flevin. You'll see poor Flevin a little later. We were up there first of all. You can see up there, all hard standing pictures up there. As you look across the car park, you can see a blue building. That is actually the pub come club called Out of the Blue. And there she is, my little friend. And that's Rita. And everybody sat down. And they're quite everybody's starting to chill out. <laughs> night last night, sat around with friends, had a few drinks, a few conversations, and went to bed, and it really rained quite heavily last night, it's quite extreme, but this morning it seems to have dried up again, and uh, hopefully it's going to be not too bad a day, so we'll, we'll see how the day takes us. see it right at the front there. It's the one that you see the pictures of with the waves coming across up over in the winter. I'll try and get down here this winter and see if we can get some footage of it when it happens. So if you come down to Port Levin, you need to do some 
shop in this little supermarket, which is a little bit hidden away, really. So it sits on the right outside of the harbour as you look in from the sea. Yeah, he's moving some as well, isn't he? He's done that a fair few years. Yeah, he's steering it. He's, he's so balanced there, isn't he? Yeah. Maybe little sprats and that are coming in. He had a little trolley, and maybe he's just put some fish in and he's got them and it's his boat there. Yeah. And of course, here in Cornwall, we have our own ways of telling the weather, and we always know what it's going to be like. Here we are, literally three hours later. The tide's gone out. And it's a totally different harbour then. Certainly a lot more people about as well. So here we are at the seafront in Perth Levin. Behind me you can see the church, the one I was referring to earlier when the bad storms come in in the winter. And you see the pictures of the waves crashing up over the tower. We're walking out on the jetty. It's just stunning. Really lovely place. Probably one of the more expensive places in Cornwall to come, but if you count like we do, it really isn't as too expensive. But it is Port Levin. You know, you see quite a lot of uh, celebrities down here. Apparently yesterday, Jeremy Clarkson was here. Bears and the Happy Mondays apparently has been seen down here yesterday. And lead singer of McFly. I don't know his name, but apparently he's here as well. I've not seen any of them. There's a path and it follows on a bit further and in behind is a little bar boat. And there's a path that follows up that path follows on and there's like a, a lake in behind, isn't there? And the lake in behind there is an area with a more popular. They were. Whether you can still do it, I don't know. Oh, it's one from the ground, though. Stable grounders. Wow, that's right, yeah. Someone's realised and they're going to like make it take advantage of it. As you walk to the left of the church, there's a path that goes up by, and you see a part of the old Port Levin. This is what I like about Cornwall. Every so often you find really, really eccentric things. Getting less and less. This is brilliant, isn't it? Look at it. It's fantastic, and it's all things they found on the beach. Photographers, for a pound and make a wish, at least it will make me very happy.
walk down that path there, as you can see the people walking down. There is a car park if you don't want to walk as far. I'm taking a view. And the sun has decided to come out properly. Quite beautiful actually. Quite quiet. My low bar is over this next hill and down the other side. That's where we're going next. Beach. It's a half mile of shingle. It separates the low from the largest natural freshwater lake in Cornwall from the sea. It's a stunning beach but it's quite difficult to get to because you have to walk to it and it's notorious for rip currents. It has a well-earned reputation for being treacherous and over the years several lives have been lost. What with the combination of powerful waves and the steep shingly beach this really is a very dangerous stretch of Cornish coast. There are many signs advising you not to swim, and on this stretch, it is very advisable to take heed and follow what the signs say. There is a legend that states a man called Tregigo was part of a punishment to remove all the sand from Gunwallow and take it to Port Leven and where the sea would return it. On one of these journeys, he is said to have dropped a bag of sand at the entrance of Helston Harbour, and this is what formed the bar. Whatever the rumours, this is a weekend in the summer holidays in Cornwall. The beach is practically empty. So if you're not worried about swimming, you could have a beach entirely to yourself. And yes, it is very, very busy everywhere else in Cornwall this weekend. If you look through the trees, you can see just how close that freshwater pool is to the sea. It's quite incredible really how close it is. So we're all packed up and uh, we're going to have a nice walk down into St Porth Leven and uh, once we've done that we'll head home and the uh, next part of the journey is going to be looking at the next van during the week but uh, as you can see now we're all packed up 
back to being just a little basic caddy and we will now head off down to Puff Levin. As I was saying, this is um, out of the blue campsite. This is a Sunday morning now. You can see there's not a lot of people here. This is a week, week before bank holiday. And uh, you've got hookups. <laughs> got hookups here. And there's 13, 16 pitches down here. And there are probably another 30 pitches up the top, I think, and some camp pitches as well. Got um, washing facilities there, as I said, um, hot, water, hot and cold water for washing your dishes. I thought it was just cold, but it is, now, it is actually hot and cold. The lower field, I think, is a better field because you're not so crammed in. It's a bit more casual. If I walk over here, so you can see the main part of the campsite, you'll see it's much more orthodox where everybody's got a little hard stand in and they're parked up next to each other. Depends what you want, I suppose, really. I quite like the idea of being able to pull up some grass and uh, be quite casual. And the families tend to camp at the top, whereas down the bottom there didn't seem to be any families. So if that's a factor in your camping as well, that's maybe worth making a note. It's called the lower field where we were. Out of the blue campsite. Looking just to the front here, you can see the out of the blue building. And there's um, toilet, shower f facilities. And a club. club. Well, I say club. A little pub. And they do have live music. Up there is where the facilities are. Toilets and showers. And this is... The, hello there, you're right then. <laughs> and this is where the main club is. Reception for booking. Um, I don't think there's any bands planned for the next couple of weeks. Um, but I'm sure it will happen soon. Anyway, let's head off down to Port 11 for one last time, have a look round before we head on. when the tide was in. And you see how stunning it looks. And here we are the next morning when the tide's out. And you can see just how different it is. So depending on when you get here will be what you see. Of course, if you want to go on a sightseeing fishing trip, you can leave here. And, uh, it looks like some people over there are just about to go. Maybe there are better times to leave them. There's a bit more water in there.
gone commercial yet down here, which is great. I don't know how long it'll stay like this because it's getting more and more popular every year we come down. But for the time, if you want your bit of English seaside, this is definitely where to come. Like I said earlier, when the tides end, it's even more beautiful. Well, guys, that ends another camping trip. Uh, this time it was Port Leathern. We really had a great, great time. You did as well. We've done quite a lot of miles this week, running around. I'm just watching the clock hit 997.8 miles. And we've still got the trip to Tiverton to do. Uh, that will be in a different video though. Um, I can't, I think we'll split the last section of videos into two. But I've one where we're doing the section for the vans and one for the Port Flemming weekend, which we've just done. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. And if you have, you know, give the video a like and subscribe to the channel. I noticed there's a few more people subscribing to the channel recently and it really is appreciated. If you've got any comments please comment below down here somewhere. Not under the car but down below and I'll see you on the next time. See you later guys. Bye.